Let's build that groove from the ground up, starting with this polyrhythm played on the kick and the cymbals. If we add the crash accents, there's also a 3 against 4 polyrhythm going on. As with most periphery songs, Ragnarok is still in 4-4, so the polyrhythm never fully resolves before it resets. Let's add the snare into the groove and take out these two chunks. We'll call them A and B. You can see that the snare also plays along with the groupings of three few created by the polyrhythm we just did. Let's make it even easier to understand by changing the time signature to 3 to reflect both parts of the polyrhythm so we can insert these two chunks nicely. You can see just how repetitive this pattern actually is when laid out like that. But that's where the snare comes in to break things up a little. We have ABAA followed by BAAB, which is almost paradiddle like. There's also one beat more to the groove because remember we were actually in 4 4 and not 3 4, but it's basically the beginning of the same pattern of either A or B. We're gonna add the final touches to the groove, ghost notes, and they make it such that the A B A A B A A B pattern from before actually changes into A B A C B C A B, which sort of looks like a continue the pattern IQ puzzle. Why don't you try to solve this and see what letter comes next? My solution is A because that would make a perfect mirror image if we view this B here as the mirror. If we view that groove through that lens, it seems like a lot of thought went into the making of that groove, isn't it? Or maybe it's just coincidence, but I don't think so. Let's bring this pattern back into 4-4 and add the rest of the musical phrase. The two quarter note crashes here and a tom fill here. It doesn't sound as repetitive anymore when viewed like this and if you're a beginner to these sort of rhythms, it can sound slightly disorienting too. That's because our context has changed. The groove and its patterns are not exactly lying in plain sight for you to see, like how I've laid it out so clearly. Continuing from here to the last phrase of this groove, Matt Helpen doubles some of the kicks, but it's still following the pattern we discussed earlier. The rest of this video is to help those who want to learn how to play this groove effectively. Coordination is the hardest part about all these kinds of polyrhythmic grooves. So I feel we should start working on those right from the get go. The first exercise is just to make sure you can play the simple polyrhythm between your legs and right hand. Remember you can use YouTube speed function to slow all these exercises down to whatever speed you want. Next, add the snare patterns in with the proper phrasing in 4-4 without the ghost notes. You can also already just play this along with the song if you want and not move on to the next step. This is where we add in the little details like the ghost notes and this might take the longest time because it changes the feel of the groove in your ears. And your body also needs to adapt to the new motions on top of that. Like I said, it's totally fine to play the song already with the previous exercise.
The last step is to tackle the double kicks and practice the last phrase. The only thing left for me to do now is to demonstrate that entire section for you. If this video helped you in any way, I would really appreciate it if you could check out my web store, purchase a PDF or a t-shirt. Or you can also buy me a coffee at my coffee page. It's basically a one-time donation which goes into helping me make better content. I'm looking to upgrade my old camera so I can finally make 4K videos and future-proof my content. In the meantime, don't stop dreaming and don't stop drumming. <laughs>